Fit Pick Pioneer, Styling Guru, the youngest in charge, Harlem. We talking about the one and only Buddy Osiris, man. Yes, sir. What's up, you guys, man? Welcome back to my channel. You know, I appreciate all you guys tapping in each and every time, man. If you're new to the channel, please stay wild because this is the flyest community on YouTube, and it's really just a great community. We talk about everything fashion, everything fly, everything jiggy. We talk about it here, man. So hit that subscribe button, hit that bell, hit that like button, stay a while, please. Um, but Today's video, we talking about Bloody Osiris, man. And I started this little series just to highlight the important icons in the fashion community. Um, last time we talked about Nigo, who is a designer. So I wanted to talk about stylists this time because stylists really don't get the credits they deserve. They really out here styling your favorite um, famous people, rappers, singers, they styling them. Um, but they don't get the credit they deserve because no one really knows about them. Like, I like to think about it like the producers in the music world is the stylist in the fashion world. They go hand in hand, so they really need more attention if you really think about it. So what better way to start than with Bloody Osiris? I know you guys, a lot of you guys don't know about Bloody Osiris, but I wanted to highlight him because he's so different. He's so um, the proportion king, I like to call him, man. He's so different, he's out this world, and everybody just have him on his radar. Um, so I just wanted to highlight him. There's not too much information out on him, but I did my best to, you know, watch different videos, you know, read different articles and find the best information I can for y'all to have a great video, of course. So, with that, we're gonna stop talking and we're gonna get right into the video and talk about the one and only Bloody Osiris, man. Okay, so Bloody Osiris was born July 25th in Harlem, New York, 1994, right? I'm telling you, if you don't know about him yet, you will know about him very, very soon because he's, he's big. Okay, so as a kid growing up in Harlem, buddy, he said he just dressed like everyone else, but in Harlem, he, that means he was always fly, because Harlem is fly. Like this, he talks about in an interview with Hypebeast that the competitive nature of Harlem from, you know, YT Wednesdays to all that, that just had him fly. Like, he was fly, but he just dressed like everyone else. He always, clothes was always at a forefront, but it was never the bloody old we know today. So then, he soon, as growing up, he finally started to find himself um, in the early 2000s, he started to, you know, mix, mix match, you know, that high designer, like Rick Owens and all that, with, like, just regular like, streetwear, like V-Lone and Supreme and all that. He started to mix to find his own style that no one else had at the time. So this took off, like, really. And this is when Instagram was starting to come up. This is early 2000s. So Instagram was a baby at the time, starting to get some traction. And Bloody Osiris treated Instagram like a job. He actually, in the same interview with Hypebeast, he explains that like, social media is hustling. Like, without, yeah, he said his social media is hustling, but like, he can't get in trouble for it, and he's not outside. Like, he took that very seriously, and he just used his gram to gain a following. And off that following, he just started to blow up small. He started just getting a name for himself in the street community. So, Bloody Osiris, he said he was good in school, but he didn't really go that much. I'm pretty sure he was in college as well. I'm just not sure which college because he never really talked about it. But he still took Instagram very seriously. He revolutionized the FitPick. Like, when I started posting, I was like, yo, when FitPick, that's because of him. Like, he made that cool. Like, he made the FitPick something to do through the early 2000s when Instagram was just coming up. This is when he started to find his st own style with the help of his, bro his brother, Buddy Dior. His brother played a huge role in his success due to the fact that his brother was not only like his brother and supporting him, but they was both fly together. And his brother was probably his best friend as well because he always kept it real with him. Bloody um, Osiris says that his brother would tell him straight up if something's not fly. Like your supporters will never do that. Your supporters will just be like, yo, that's fly, keep it up, even if it's whack. You need people in your corner that's gonna tell you if something's whack, that it's whack. Word, so that, that's what his brother did. So them two started to take off. And so in 2015, Osiris and Dior both shot um, for Vice. And in this shoot, not only did they get to pick what they wanted to wear, but they also had creative control over like, like how they posed and things like that. So it was kind of his first like, you know, styling and you know, 
modeled him playing all in one. So it was really a huge break for him. And also, 2015, he teased the launch of his brand, Jerome was more with his brother, but that really didn't get popped into like recent years because of um, like this other brand he started working on. But we're gonna talk about that a little later when we get to the more um, current day things. But so 2015 was a big year for him. Obviously, he got his chance with Vice. He got his own um, brand. You know, he's making his scene, he has a huge following, all of this, but in 2016 is when his life really, really changed. Um, Ian Connor, if you don't know about Ian Connor, he's also a huge inspiration in the fashion community. A video will be on him very soon, but Ian Connor at this time especially, he, you know, he, he was probably the most well-connected person in fashion, he, in streetwear fashion, I'm sorry, and, you know, he... Bro, he really probably, as controversial as Ian Connor is, if you do know about him, he's very controversial. But he really launched a lot of people's careers, Bloody Osiris being one of them. This is because in 2016, he gave him the chance of a lifetime. That's, you know, he had a hand, you know, he in selecting the models for Kanye West, you know, Easy Season 3 fashion show. And he divided, he invited not only Bloody Osiris, but Bloody Dior as well, along with Lil, Lil Yachty and a couple other people. But this really, you know, as you can imagine, this is your big break. Like, at this point, you made it. Easy season three fashion, um, after party with the Life of Pablo album release. Like, but he made it at this point, man. He's up, he made it. Both of them, Osiris and Dior, they made it. Oh man, he's, in, he's involved in the in the attempt to revive Kanye's old brand called Pastel. It didn't really make the comeback in, you know, um, it was sought after, but you know, he was involved in the revival of it. And you know, he was enjoying his success. He was up by now. However, both Dior and Osiris found themselves in a little bit of trouble as you know, they got they both got arrested. Um, we don't I don't know what for. I can only speculate and I don't like speculating, but all I know is buddy um Dior got a, arrested after an altercation with one of the activists because they had beef. Ono the activists and the Blood Brothers both had beef. Um so people say that Bloody Osiris was involved in that. You know, I don't know. I don't like to speculate none of that. I'm just saying he did get arrested. He talked about in a uh, interview with um, Hype Beast that he doesn't really do interviews. So I keep saying interview with Hype Beast because that's really like the only interview he did. But um, he talked about how he was really on the plane from like Spain, I think it was. And now he's eating, eating good. And now he's in jail. Like it was like a, a, it's probably the lowest point in his life, to be honest with you. But he bounced back very well as, you know, they didn't miss a step. They came out, no trouble, they did their time, now they're back, and they're smarter. They're trying to blow up, man, for real. So now he's coming back, 2017, Virgil flew um, Bloody Osiris out to some model for his um, 2017 off-white, you know, runaway. Also, his Paris runway, I believe. Also, the style, some of the models in the off-white. He's a stylist now, he's a model, he's an inspiration, he's all of this. Like, he's up, he's styling. He talks about how um, Virgil was, he learned so much from Virgil, but how he talks about also that Virgil says he learns a lot from Bloody Osiris, and Bloody Osiris don't even know how, and I can tell you why. Bloody Osiris is really the definition of being yourself. It's really the definition of just, Finding your own style and sticking to it, man, and like, it's so inspirational. He's, in my eyes, honestly, Bloody Osiris is the king of proportions. If you look at his Instagram, no one wear that, but he will, and he'll pull it off because of the confidence he has. And the confidence he brings, he talks about the energy. It's not what he wears, it's the energy he brings with what he wears. That's why he's so important, that's why he's so different, that's why there's no one like him, because it's such energy he has, you can't emulate it. And, you know, now in 2017, he also styled some of your favorite rappers. That was Scott. He styled him because um, he was extremely sought after. You know, he has a name for himself now. He's established. So Travis Scott reached out to him to style him. Um, he did the O32C cover in 2018 um, for Travis Scott. Um, the link between them was most likely Travis's photographer, as him, as him and Buddy Osiris knew each other in the streetwear scene in New York. Like the streetwear scene back then was. And saying I wish I was part of it to be honest with you, but <laughs> well, you know, Buddy Osiris, you know, he's styling Travis Scott, and he's honestly he's still a close affiliate with Cactus Jack. You see him in some of the pictures, you know, I put one up, but you know the McDonald's one, he's he's in them, like he's part of Cactus Jack now. He's he's up, he's a celebrity, he's up there. But 
Um, remember that brand I mentioned earlier that the, the Bloody Brothers started, Jerome Jamal? It was pretty much dormant until 2018 when they dropped this bandana, the Spongebob bandana. You've probably seen it on some rappers, I'll put them up. But you know, they were starting, they were starting to, they, they not only did that, but they also did more Spongebob collab. But that's not really what they was feeling. Um, they wanted to be more of a high-end brand. Um, but in 2020, Bloody Osiris also dropped a Bloody's Underworld capsule, which is sep a separate entity from Jewel and Jewel. But he's just, ex as you can tell, he's just experimenting right now. He's really just experimenting with clothes, designing. He's He's been a model, he's been a stylist, he's been an influencer. Now I think he's trying to put on that hat of just being a designer. So this is the early stages of a great designer I'm seeing, so I want to see what he does next. Jerome Jamal just did a collab in 2021 with um with 7th Heaven and the pieces were heat, bro. Like so much different from the 2018 version of Jerome Jamal. You could tell he's really focusing on making this a high-end brand. I didn't really know about it when it dropped. As you as you guys know, I just released really, really, really started getting into fashion. But if I knew about it, I probably would have been there for the drop. Everything sold out in a second is like because the pieces are so nice, they're high quality, they're nice color palettes, they're all that. You know, it's a great, great. So if this is where the brand's going only up from here, it's gonna be a huge brand. Like, not only does Blade Osiris already proven himself in the fashion community, he already has ties in the fashion community because he's a popular name, you know, ties with not only regular ties, ties with Virgil, ties with Kanye, ties with Ian, ties with probably um, all the ties with Cactus Jack, all those ties, you know, this brand's gonna be something for real. So I just want you guys all to know Buddy Osai, he's a huge inspiration to mine personally, especially because he just inspires, like, he inspires me especially to take social media seriously. He inspires me that, like, I could be, you know, an idol like him, because he did it, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just have to put the work in, you just have to find your own style. You gotta be different from other people. That's what I try to do, you know, my style is, you know, different all the time. I don't try to emulate anyone. I try to take what I like from different people and make it me. So that's what he taught me, the proportion king. Check him out on the gram. Keep your eyes open for anything Buddy Osiris because he, he don't do interviews, he don't do none of these stays out the way. So if you know fashion, you know him. That's how you know you know fashion if you know him. So I'm trying to put y'all on the game. Man, catch some inspiration from him for real. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. Um, there's gonna be more of these videos to come for sure. You know, the fashion world is so big. I just want y'all to know all of it. Like, I just want to know all of it too. So, that's what this is. I, I love y'all. Like, comment, subscribe. Comment something you learned. And, you know, stay tuned because I'll be back very soon, man. Love.